You've got to tune to 90.3 FM, KEXP in Seattle, all over the world at KEXP.org. I'm Kevin Cole at a vast studio with uh, Cumulus. Take it away. The smoke here has been lingering since 2002. You're sitting here across from me, and all I want is you to tell you how I really feel. We don't have to break this to know it's real. We don't have to break this again. Will you tell?
Cumulus live on the afternoon show, KEXP, live from Avast Studios. Kevin Cole here with you. And uh, Cumulus, the project of Alexandra Nijukovsky. Yeah, and the, <laughs> Alex, uh, welcome to the afternoon show. Thank you for having me here and having all of us here. Yeah, congrats on a new album. It's been five years, new lineup. Do you mind introducing the band uh, first? Yeah. Um, this is William on, like, everything. Uh, he's on a lot. And so he does uh, backup vocals and keys and acoustic guitar. Um, and this is Stanley over here on the bass and the bass synth. Um, and we have Tom on the drums. And then we have Sebastian on guitar. Uh, welcome, to the KXP Airways. We just heard Retreat, which was a, a, a single in advance of the new album, Comfort World, and then the uh, lead, lead song, track number one from uh, Comfort World. Sing to me, I like how you change the lyrics and the chorus, mm. which you don't hear very often. So it starts out, won't you talk to me, yeah. then won't you sing to me, then won't you walk away from me. I always really like songs being a progression, you know, of the story. And so sometimes I think the, the melody is as much of a chorus as the actual words. So if you've got a melody that's memorable, then you can kind of advance the story with some different words. It, it's cool, and you don't hear that very often. You, you hear the verses advance the story, but, mm -hmm. you know, kind of, I think it's the chorus. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. It's the hook. Yeah. Um, so congrats on a new album. It's been five years. A lot's happened that it, this kind of seems like uh, it marks your return to music. Do, mm -hmm. you, do you feel that way about it? I do. Um, I definitely, like, I was always kind of playing shows here and there, but I kind of feel like LifeWise music was, it's always going to be in my life, but I wasn't prioritizing it, and I think I was a little lost in that. Um, and then when, uh, um, you know, I think the story that I've told people, you know, is like I got fired from a job and um, kind of shook up my whole like life of what I was prioritizing. Sometimes you need something to kick you in the ass. Yeah. Get you going. Exactly. So I think a lot of that was happening and that um, and then I went uh, I had time on my hands and I realized that I was kind of doing the wrong things with my time. Um, and so I got the chance to, um, you know, write this album and go into the studio and, uh, and make this album about all of those feelings. Yeah. What was, uh, the process of making this album different? Like, like how did you approach? Yeah. Um, well, Sebastian was there with me the whole time and that's how we met. I mean, we'd met many years ago, um, through the Anacortis, like Seattle, connection music community um we played some shows together with the lonely forest and special explosion and things like that and i got the opportunity to work with our friend our mutual friend mike davis who's in um the sea cats mm -hmm. and a bunch of and he kind of runs the hall of justice and is a producer and um i'd never had a producer before and so i got to go into the studio and um, really explore the potential of these songs and kind of take the time, all the time that I needed. It was a very special and rare life occurrence where um, Chris Walla, you know, obviously like it, Hall of Justice is his studio. And we kind of just um, were able to take whatever time uh, artists weren't paying to use the studio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we'd be like, there's a couple hours free on Thursday night. Do you want to use them? Yeah. yeah. So we kind of did that for like seven months, like nice. just picked up the scrap pieces of time that we could get or doing like two or three days of time, um, in the hall. And we started from like garage band demos, like acoustic demos and electronic drum beats and things like that. All really rough sketches of songs that I'd done and then brought to Mike. And then, um, in the studio, we had uh, Colin Ritchie on drums, Eric Walters on bass, and, uh, and Sean Lane on drums, too, as well. And we kind of just went in there and um, explored the songs. They hadn't heard the demos before we went in there. And so we would pretty much, as a group, jam on the song for like a couple hours until we got a drum take we really liked, and then we would go from there. Did you feel that changed the nature of the songs, having uh, the collaborators of the band not having heard the songs until... yeah. Definitely. Um, it was something where I'm almost nervous to ever go into the studio again thinking that I know exactly how a song will turn out mm -hmm. because I think it was a really magical experience to be able to let the songs kind of guide me where they were meant to go. I didn't even really know that that was a thing until it was happening. Do you think you could have done that or had that approach on the first album? I don't think so. I, mean, I think that... Um, 
you get little experiences as they're meant to come. And I mean, that first album, we'd arranged the songs just as they were recorded. And we went in there and laid them down for really cheap. And, you know, the just knocked them the, out. the unknown in Anacortes and knocked them out in like three or four days. And that's that kind of sounds like what you're supposed to do for a first album, yeah. you know. So um, and I'm glad I've had that experience, too. Like I've kind of had both. I've had the let's go in there and knock it out recording experience. And I've had the let's like let this kind of linger and like, you know, soak in the juices of whatever is yeah. happening around us. Um, and then retreat actually we did as a band. And so that was really cool. I got to do that experience cool. with this arrangement. Maybe it was kind of cool that it took five years for the second album. So you didn't have to have like that sophomore slump that kind of everybody always talks about where you have your first album, then you follow something up really quickly, and maybe you haven't had more experience or time to work on the songs or whatever. Yeah. And I also kind of feel like I went through a lot of life experiences that um, were really vital to just kind of being able to write the way that I do now. And, um, and you know, I landed on 10, 10 songs, 11 songs, but there's many songs that have fallen through the cracks in the past five years. And I also kind of think that happens for a reason, you know. What were some of those life experiences? Um, well, me, I think just kind of, uh, well, Comfort World, I came up with the concept because I was um, driving in Yakima, Washington with an ex at the time. And uh, we saw a billboard for an abandoned mattress store and it said Comfort World. And I, at the time, I thought, man, that's like really beautiful. That kind of describes our little bubble that we've created. How awesome is that? The way you have a comfort world to always go back to. But then um, when I got fired and uh, the relationship ended, it was all kind of really close together at the same time. And, um, and then my mom, who I had not talked to in a really long time, uh, has diagnosed with breast cancer. And so I was kind of just dealing with a lot of darkness all at once. So basically like all of these things that I had kind of, you know, thought to be my pillars of, of like stability. Associated with uh, comfort yeah, world. Yeah, had, had or... fallen apart. Um, and so then I was kind of thinking about, oh, comfort world, what does that mean? If it's like, is it real? Is it a good thing? And, um, it kind of just became an exploration of, you know, the reality that uh, I think that I was putting too much weight on um, on comfort and staying still and uh, not challenging myself and not doing the things that I think I really deep down knew I needed to be doing. Um, and then after, you know, making this album, it was also... I think I was, there's so much. I was, I was really scared of making music with other people. Um, you know, I've always kind of felt nervous about my skill level or how to communicate what I want in songs to other people. Um, and so I think it just took a lot of uh, exploration. And I met some really amazing people who really believed in me. And I just felt myself uh, be becoming myself again. Wow. So that's so this album was really, really important uh, for my life. And then meeting this group has really um, been really important to me too. And we've been through a lot together now just in the last year and a half that we've been playing together. So, yeah. And you've had a pretty, like, a pretty intense tour, right, uh, August, September. Mm -hmm. Seemed like a pretty busy uh, tour schedule, which I'm sure is very bonding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I always joke, you know, you really get to know things about yourself and the people you're with when you're in a tin can for six weeks. <laughs> um, so um, for someone, that it sounds like you described yourself having worked a little more isolated in the past. Mm -hmm. um, I heard that in the recording of this new album, you surrounded yourself with a lot of people in the actual process itself. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about that and why you felt that was important. Yeah, well, it was um, Mike. Mike Davis is somebody who is uh, a magical, a magical being and a magical brain, and he just had so many awesome ideas, um, you know, that were just kind of. I think that, and it was interesting because I, I just hosted that panel on KEXP the other couple weeks ago about what it's like to be in the studio with a producer and things like that. And um, I feel really lucky that the relationship we developed it was just an instant connection, and so anything that he wanted to try, I trusted that it was a good idea to try. And also we had the time, so why not try it? So we kind of ended up exploring a lot of elements in these songs that I don't think I would have ever gotten to on my own. 
Um, and that's just such a powerful thing to be open to that collaboration and to have a trusting relationship with someone who, um, you know, is, you know, you're both there to make the songs the best that they can be. And that was our mission. And so it was like, let's find the universe for this song. Let's find the universe for this song. And um, just never. And, you know, I think sometimes in group dynamics, you can have moments where you're like, maybe this band is make, you've had, you'll play with people where you're like, I think you're making this more about yourself and your part than the actual song, you know? And in the studio, um, I surrounded myself with people that were very, we were all on board with the song is the most important thing. Well, the songs and the album sound great. The album is Comfort World, Cumulus Live here on the Afternoon Show. Do you mind playing a couple more songs? Yeah, not at all. Cool. Um, this song is called Stereo. And, uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites. It's a, I think it's got an interesting sound on the record. And I've never played with an SPD before, even before we were in the studio doing, like, electronic beats. And we've been, Tom kind of uh, got us started in doing it live, and it's been really cool. This is never over the way you're running through my mind The way I breathe you in, I wear your clothes to pass the time Thanks for having us here. Oh, you bet. Thank you for being here. Um, this next song, I kind of wanted to play this one because it is—it's special to me. Because uh, on the on the album, it's actually the same version I recorded in my bedroom. So I recorded this song on like a fifty-dollar microphone that I got from a store, and uh, and um, 
it plugs like directly into your phone or directly into your computer because uh, interfaces are intimidating to me still. And I'm like, if one thing happens that blocks my songs from coming out of my head as they need to, I will be derailed and then the songwriting will end. <laughs> um, so I was there in my room and this song came out and uh, I brought it to Mike and everybody who we were recording with and they listened and they were like, yeah, we can't do anything with that. Uh, it's it's just the way it needs to be. So it ended up on the album as the song that I wrote in my bedroom. Um, so I'm just going to play that one myself. Sweet. Yeah. It's called Cannonball. Kevin Cole here at the Vast Studios with Cumulus with a special uh, bonus track, a song that I, I can't play on the radio, a song that I love. It's an anthem, an anthem for all of us because we're all fuck ups. Cumulus with Tough Crowd.
I don't think anybody fucked it up. Yeah, I think that sounded great. You good? You did a little bit. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> you got in keeping with the song. Cumulus Live here on the afternoon show, live from Avast Studios. Uh, the new album is Comfort World. Thanks again. It's KEXP. A big time thanks to uh, all you, Justin Scott, uh, Brady, Kevin Suggs on sound, Louise, Mitch, Dominique. Babs, and also uh, Kelsey Brannon, Afternoon Show producer. Thanks to the uh, Avast staff, uh, staff, Stu and Jay. It is KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.